back in the summer, I recorded this short video. I was recently watching a very popular, very well-known YouTuber's channel and he was showing the kit and equipment that he takes out and my mind was blown at the amount of his equipment that was taken up with spare clothing. Tons of spare socks, tons of spare underwear, spare trousers, spare insulating jackets. Most of the kit and weight he was carrying was spare clothing compared to what I take with me, which is that. That is what I take with me from a spare clothing perspective for anything from one night and beyond 99% of the time. If you want to find out what's in this spare clothing kit, why I carry so little, but perhaps most importantly, how I use this to my advantage, then hit that subscribe button, click the bell notification because there'll be a video coming out very shortly. Admittedly, five months later, I'm now providing that follow-up video and I've brought that same small bag with me. If you want to find out what's in this and more importantly, why stuff isn't in this, keep watching. Before we go any further though, what I really want you to take away from this video isn't necessarily specifically what's in here, what make it is, or what brand it is, or anything like that. What I really want you to take away from this video is the thought process that has gone into carrying this or not carrying some of the other stuff. That's the really important thing because you can apply that logic to different situations. You can apply that logic to different conditions and different equipment that you may or may not have that mirrors mine. So try not to focus too much on specifically what's in it, but more on the logic and the thought process around it. Let's discuss this logic then. I could carry a damn sight more spare clothing than this. I could be a damn sight more warm and comfortable than this allows me to be. I would therefore be carrying more kit, more equipment, and therefore more weight and more bulk. So for me, there is a certain balancing act at play here. Carrying enough stuff to be safe and relatively comfortable versus not carrying so much stuff that I'm uncomfortable and potentially unsafe by carrying too much weight and too much bulk. And that balancing act will depend very, very much so on your confidence, your experience, and just how uncomfortable you want to be. Remember, the outdoors, mountaineering, climbing, bushcrafting, whatever you want to call it, you're, you're getting outdoors, you're wanting to be outdoors, you're wanting to put yourselves in, in conditions and in situations that, that, aren't, <laughs> that aren't the same as sitting at home or having a more passive hobby. There is to be, there should be, an element of accepting discomfort and not being able to emulate the same comfort that you would have at home. And it's that balancing act, it's that experience. My experience, my confidence has led me 99% of the time to be able to get away with carrying this as my spare clothing. Now, when I say spare clothing, I need to be really clear here. This doesn't mean that my waterproof jacket's in here. It doesn't mean my waterproof trousers are in here. It doesn't mean that my, my mid layer, my warm jacket, my puffer jacket, my down jacket is in here. This is the spare clothing that I carry to swap out anything that I am currently wearing that I may need to change into. So this isn't every item of clothing that Craig ever carries on the hills. This is my spare clothing, my swap out clothing, my dry kit, whatever you want to call it. So there's the logic there. It's a balancing act between carrying enough to be comfortable and carrying too much to be uncomfortable versus being uncomfortable versus being li living in the lap of luxury whilst in a tent or whilst under a tarp or in a boffy bag, a bivy bag, something like that. There's no right answer. My right answer will be different to some other experienced person's right answer. My right answer will be different to some inexperienced person's right answer. But what I want you to do is to go through the thought process for yourself, test it out and iterate that thought process if it doesn't work for you. If you find you're carrying clothing continually 
that you just never need to change into, don't carry it. If you find on occasions that you got caught out and actually that wasn't a particularly comfortable night and it wasn't an exceptional night, then consider carrying something to, uh, to, to plug that gap. Let's get on, let's have a look at what's in here. For those kit fiends amongst you, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. Let me, as I'm just undoing this bag here, explain to you my, my process when I get to a campsite. I'll get to a campsite, whatever I've been wearing whilst I've been out walking, I will keep that on. It's probably going to be sweaty, it's probably going to be muddy, it's probably going to be wet. I'm going to keep that on because I'm going to be moving around the campsite, possibly building up a sweat again, certainly still generating heat, therefore no point kneeling down to, to, to put tent pegs in, therefore there's no point in putting clean, dry stuff on. I want to stay wet, I want to stay dirty. Um, stay wet and dirty. There's there's a channel catchphrase, right? Stay wet and dirty. That's a different type of channel. I'm going to keep my, di my dirty kit on. I'm going to put the tent up. I'm going to set out all my stuff, my sleeping mat, my sleeping bag. I'm going to make sure that I have done everything that I need to to get that site ready for the night. When I've done that and I can start to cool down, I'll start to change out of my wet and dirty kit. In here, I carry, whoops, throwing the gear everywhere. In here, I carry a dry, warm, clean base layer top. Even if I haven't been sweating that much, and I probably have, I will take my, my damp, my sweaty, my worn base layer off. I will put this on. I will do that almost as soon as I set everything else up. I want to keep my core warm and my core dry. I've been sweating, I've stopped, I'm going to start to get cold, let's not have a damp base layer on. So I will put that on. In the winter, I will carry a heavier weight base layer than that, but it's still a base layer. Swap out wet kit, put on dry kit, that's there. When my core is protected, I can start thinking about my feet. I will take my wet, sweaty, dirty, muddy socks off and I will powder them with some foot powder. Once I've done that, I will put on a pair of dry, clean socks. I carry one pair of dry, clean socks. I will put those on. I spoke earlier on, didn't I, about having wet, dirty, damp footwear. I do not carry, as I've seen some YouTubers do, spare footwear for in my tent and around camp. What I do is I put back on my wet, dirty, damp, muddy, soaking wet through boots. But before I do, on top of those nice, clean, dry, powdered socks that I've just shown you, on top of those, I put on a pair of Gore-Tex socks. These are a godsend. What that allows me to do is it allows me to maintain those dry, warm socks. It, maintains me, it allows me to maintain the integrity of those. I put my wet boots back on. If I hadn't put the Gore-Tex socks on, within minutes my socks would be just as wet as they were before. That pair of Gore-Tex socks protects them. I've got warm feet, I've got dry feet. I'm not carrying spare footwear and all of the weight and bulk that goes with that just to be able to sit around camp with warm dry feet. Those Gore-Tex socks give me that. If you haven't got Gore-Tex socks, I've seen people use, and I've used them to be honest, fairly heavyweight plastic bags on your feet. You clearly don't want your weekly big shop bag or anything like that. In fact, I've seen and I've used myself, you can buy very thick dog poo bags that fit very nicely over your socks. They come up to sort of, you know, upper ankle height. They work very, very well. You don't want thin sandwich type bags because they'll, they'll just rip, but something fairly heavy duty, fairly thick dog poo bags are good, good quality ones. Um, and, and they'll, they'll, they won't be the same as Gothic socks because they're not breathable, but they're not a bad alternative for just sitting around camp. So think this through then. My core is warm and dry. 
as a result of putting that on. My feet are warm and dry as a result of powdering them and putting clean socks on. My feet can stay warm and dry because I've put Gore-Tex socks on. I stressed earlier on that I only carry one pair of socks regardless of how long I'm out for. And the reason for that is they're not going to get wet, dirty, gopping whilst I'm just sitting around camp with my Gore-Tex socks on. In the morning, I'll take them off if I've slept in them. I'll store them away again in my bottomless bag and I'll put those wet, dirty, stinking socks back on again. I'll have wrung them out. I might have tried to dry them by putting them in my, in my crutch, sleeping with... I might have put them between my sleeping bag and my sleeping mat or something like that. I'll have tried to dry them out. They're never going to be bone dry. But you know what? It doesn't matter because next day, I'm putting on those wet gopping boots again and I'm setting off through the bogs, through the marshes, crossing streams. Any pair of dry socks I put on would just get wet again. So I maintain this wet dry routine with my socks. One pair for walking in, one pair for getting changed into. If I were out for a very, very long time, and unfortunately I'm, I'm just not anymore, I might, I might carry another pair of dry socks. But... It, one pair, of, one pair of dry has lasted me for several days out, no problem. I would change out of my dry base layer in the morning. It's kept me warm and dry during the night. And I'd put the damp one back on. Again, I would have tried to air it during the night. If it was a nice, nice evening, I might have hung it off of my tent outer to get some wind through it. But I'm putting that damp top back on. It feels minging when you do it in the morning. Oh, it's horrible. Within minutes of walking, you haven't got a clue. Your body's heated up again. It's started to dry it out or you're sweating anyway, so it's got just as wet as it had been the day before. It ain't a pleasant experience getting used to wet dry routine, um, but it's, it, what it does, if you can get used to it, is it reduces the amount of kit that you have to carry, because you are not carrying a spare base layer for every night that you're out and every day that you walk. You're not carrying a spare pair of socks for every day that you're out. It dramatically, as you can see, cuts down on the amount of excess spare kit that you carry. In terms of a base layer, in terms of a mid layer jacket, I just carry one of those anyway. In the summer I carry a lightweight one, in the winter I carry a much heavier weight one. In terms of trousers, trousers are an interesting one. This YouTuber I referred to at the beginning of the video had two pairs of spare trousers and the pair that they were wearing to actually be out on the hills. I do not know what apocalyptic condition they were expecting to find, but I've never found them. In terms of trousers, if the trousers are a little damp around the ankles and the mid-calf, I leave them on whilst I'm around camp, okay? Is it perfect? No, but remember, we're not trying to emulate the conditions we live in at home. We're outdoors. It's going to be a bit grubby and a little bit damp. Not too much, not dangerously so, but we have to learn to suck it up at times. So I'll keep them on. If the trousers are absolutely dripping wet, soaked through, I've made a bad call somewhere along the day, either with a river crossing, route selection, or I didn't put my waterproof over trousers on in time. It happens, it happens, okay? What I'll do there is I'll make a call. If it's, if it's a cold night, if it's a cold evening, I'll probably take them off and I'll put my waterproof trousers on in their place. They're windproof, they're waterproof, they give me an element of insulation. I don't look a dick around the campsite with my bare white legs hanging out and I will try to dry off my trousers in another way. If they're slightly damp and it's a good evening, I'll leave them on because my body heat as I'm walking around, just sitting around, you've often, you've all sat there, right? When it's, you've, you've had wet trousers, but it's been dry conditioned. You can see the steam rising off them. You've got to be careful we're making that. It's a good call to make but it's, it's naturally cooling your body down as you do it. So you've got to make that judgment call. I do not carry spare trousers. I carry waterproof over trousers, which on occasions I can use as spare trousers for sitting around in the evening. Everything I've said there, notice I've not actually gone into any brands there about what anything is, because it doesn't matter. Spare socks are spare socks. A spare base layer is a spare base layer. Gore-Tex socks or, or, or decent waterproof bags for your feet, it doesn't matter what brand they are. Foot powder doesn't matter what brand it is. So don't focus on the specifics of the kit. Just think about this, this ethos of 
of carrying less, accepting that you are going to be uncomfortable to a degree if you carry less, but that doesn't mean that you are being unsafe by carrying less. I'm not advocating carrying so little that you have a, a liability to yourself and others. What I am suggesting is try carrying less, but only up to the point where you are mentally comfortable with doing so. Physically, you might be a little more uncomfortable than if you've got a spare pair of socks for the whole seven day expedition that you're out. So there's my thought process, there's my logic. What do you think? What do you do? Do you, and be honest, do you overpack? Do you carry a spare for a spare for a spare just in case? Do you overlay, overladen yourself? Hike your own hike, walk your own walk, climb your own mountain. That's absolutely fine. I'm not saying that if you carry too much kit, you are a bad person. We can still be friends. Just never ask me to carry your pack for you. Do, do you have a similar thought process to me? Do you carry a lot less than others? Have you pared your kit down so that you are safe and you are relatively comfortable without being dangerous or a liability to others? Whichever end of that spectrum you're at, or if you sit somewhere in the middle, let me know in the comments below what your approach is to carrying spare equipment when out in the hills. It's a really interesting topic. I'm sure we'll get lots of differences of opinion. Wherever you are, it's not the right or wrong answer, it's your answer. Drop it in the comments below. See you soon, folks. Bye.